Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video I thought we would have a little cosy chat, I've got the mood lighting, about all the books that I read this year. If you'd like to know what books are on my to read list, that video is coming separately so stay tuned for that. But here are the books that I read this year um, and my thoughts about each. I should say as well I wanted to read 15 books this year where mid-December I've read 14 um, which is quite good for me. I, I like to read a lot but on the evening when it's like prime time for me to pick up a book I also want to do my knitting, I wonder what other projects I've got going on. You know we've been renovating the whole house this year so that's been taking up a lot of evenings. So yeah 14 books for me is quite good, I'm hoping I can make it to 15 before Christmas. Also I will um, leave all the links to these books in my description, they are affiliate links so I earn a small commission if you buy them via my link, you don't pay any more for it, but I get a little kickback, which is nice for me because I'm not really going massively into the whole um, affiliate marketing thing because I don't really believe in just making people buy stuff they don't need. Um, so you'll never see me putting out Amazon links or anything like that, but for stuff that I believe in, I will, and I believe in books. And all the links are to bookshop.org, which are a great bookshop that actually donate money to independent bookshops in real life. So I think we can all agree that that's okay to support. So the first book that I read this year was Bibliomaniac by Robin Ince. Um, I love this book. I thought it was great. I actually stumbled across its existence on Twitter because the author was coming to a local bookshop of mine to give to do signings. Um, but otherwise I didn't know it was coming out so I got it, read it and ever since I finished it I've been thinking about opening my own bookshop. That's quite effective um, of a book really isn't it? It's got me contemplating lifestyle change. So yeah it's a lovely, it's basically about this guy who's an author, um, it's like not fiction it's true and it's how he when he published his last book goes on a tour of all these independent bookshops in the UK and it tells you all about the bookshops, where they are, what he does when he's there, what, it's just great, it's just great. It sounds kind of a weird concept but it's great. The second book I read this year was the much hyped How to Kill Your Family. Um, I loved it, I thought it was great, it definitely lived up to the hype. It's so different to anything else that I've ever read. Yeah, I just thought it was great and it was really clever and it was really interesting and like there's a twist at the end which I won't spoil but I did not see that coming it was so random but yeah also just like made a lot of sense um, and just was perfect so because it also the beginning sort of starts like you know where the character ends up at the end so then to no, already know where she ends up but then there's still this whole other twist that you never knew about yeah it's crazy but I loved it I thought it was great so then I read Bridgerton number one and I've actually now read Bridgerton one to four this year so that's four whole books out of 14 that are just Bridgerton which I find sort of like a bit embarrassing and slightly of a guilty pleasure but they're so good I love the series um because I love any sort of period drama anyway but then this was like period drama but modern I just think it's great so when I read the book that I thought am I going to enjoy this because I already know what happens like is it even going to be like interesting and it was um, and I loved it and the books are slightly different to the TV show as they are in most cases so that's interesting and I also wanted to get ahead of the series to know what was going to happen um, so yeah I've read three and four now which is great. So then also inspired by Netflix I read The Sandman by Neil Gaiman which um, was a Netflix series and I love the series I thought it was great so I thought I'll buy the book but the book is actually a graphic novel of many parts so I bought the first part and to be honest I didn't really gel with reading a graphic novel like I, I liked it but I think if I didn't already know the story I, I struggled to follow it which makes me sound so simple saying I can't follow a picture book pictures mostly with some words but it was a bit confusing and I just didn't really I don't know it must be something to do with my brain but I just I couldn't follow it properly um, because I just kept wanting to skip ahead to like the words but that's not really the point you're supposed to like look at each image to see what's happening aren't you 
um, and that I'm just not built for that apparently, which is great being a visual artist. But yeah, that being said, I did enjoy it, um, but I wouldn't buy more graphic novels, I don't think. I'll just wait for it to come out on Netflix. So then I read a book that my brother actually got me for Christmas last year, which is My Year of Rest and Relaxation, another quite popular book for the year. And yeah, I did enjoy it actually, it was a bit different. It was sort of like the Bell Jar vibes, if you've read that, but modern. Um, so yeah, it was quite slow paced, I will say that, but it was still interesting throughout. Um, I did. It didn't make me like want to give up or anything. It just, it was just how the pacing was, it was quite slow. Um, but yeah, so I did quite enjoy that. It was just a bit different and quite nice. And I've heard a lot of her books are quite slow paced. So I guess that's just her style. But yeah, it was nice. So I would recommend that. Then randomly, I read a novel called A Short History of Tractors in Ukrainian, which is so random. But basically the coffee shop that I worked at at the start of the year was closing down and we had this bookshelf full of books. So we all helped ourselves to ones that we thought looked interesting and I picked up that and I don't really know why because at first I thought it was a non-fiction book and I thought it was actually a short history of tractors in Ukraine but it's not. It's a fiction novel um, and it was quite fun actually. It's sort of like a bit comedy sort of vibes and just quite funny yeah. It was a bit random and at times I was a bit like mm, I could read something else now because some of the the story moved quite quickly but also I was like where is this going like am I that invested but yeah it was a nice little book so it was a good like palette cleanser after I'd read like the dark and heavy my year of rest and relaxation so then go on to this was like yeah quite nice so I also read and this has been on my list for a while we need to talk about money by Otega Uagba and I really liked this it was so interesting I thought it was going to be more of like a not like a self-help book but that kind of thing like we need to talk about money you know blah 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 but it was actually like mainly a memoir about her life and her experiences and um, being an immigrant family but going to private school um and the world of work and buying a house in london etc and i just found it really interesting because i'm quite nosy um and i'm a similar age to the author well i'm a bit younger so it was interesting when she's describing like first going to work first figuring out how to get a mortgage blah 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 yeah it was quite relatable so i really enjoyed that and then straight off the back of that i read her other book which is a little mini book not many pages at all called whites and she actually released this after the events of 2020 talking about like george floyd and the race issue and basically how it's white people's problem obviously so i'm not really qualified to give full commentary on this but i will say that i did find it really interesting um and i do recommend it. it's just a little short thing it's like an essay basically um so yeah i did i did enjoy reading that then i read the power of q which is this little book well i say little it's small like that but it's it's like that thick so it's not little little um but i thought i'd breeze through it and i bought it like a few years ago at one of the tate gallery shops because i thought that sounds interesting um, and it's all about how q is like maybe a facade for secretly evil things and how q does certain things and achieves certain things like as a concept um which is sort of interesting but it was written like really academically as if it was someone's dissertation or something which is fine but that's not what i was expecting i thought it was going to be like more palatable than that since it was sold in take gift shop um so yeah it was quite academically written um so a bit heavy and a bit boring at times but you know i still kind of enjoyed it and it was kind of interesting but i wouldn't read it again then in like october november i can't quite remember spotify announced they were doing audiobooks for premium members which i thought was great because I've always wanted to be an audiobook kind of gal but I just can't be bothered to sign up for another service for a start I just never really got into it so now they're on Spotify and there's actually loads of good titles on there that you can just get for free free including your premium membership so I started listening to Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett because I did enjoy the Sandman story but I didn't enjoy reading the graphic novel so I thought maybe Good Omens, whilst not a graphic novel, I might not enjoy it. Um, it depends on the style of writing. So I thought I'll listen to it and not buy like a physical copy just in case. 
But I did really enjoy it. And Good Omens on Spotify is actually read by a full cast production. So it's got David Tennant, Michael Sheen. It's got all supporting cast. So it was quite good and quite easy to follow that way. It's like listening to a play, basically, because it's got all the different voices and not just the narrator trying to do them all. So yeah, I did really like that. I'm glad I listened to it. And side note about audiobooks, I think I'll listen to a lot of autobiographies now on Spotify rather than buying them. Because to be honest, I don't like buying them anyway because they're always big and chunky. They don't look that nice on the bookshelf. I don't want loads of just random celebrities' names on my bookshelf. Um, plus, the good part about it is often an autobiography is read by the person that wrote it. So that's quite nice to get it from their perspective. So I have actually started reading or listening to Matthew Perry's autobiography, which I kind of wanted to read before. And now, obviously, that he's passed away, I thought, yeah, I will listen to that then. And it is, it's, I'm only like on chapter two, but it is quite dark and heavy so far. So if you were thinking about listening to it, I would advise that you know that first. Um, but it is really interesting. And he is really funny, even writing about the just dark things. Um, so yeah. Then the final book that I've read so far this year is called Scattered All Over the Earth and it is actually by a Japanese writer and I picked this up at a shop in London when I was there recently because I just thought it sounded interesting. It has the cutest cover. I know, I know, that's not how it works but that is why I picked it up because I've never seen it before. Um, and basically it's about in this like not too distant future where countries are disappearing it sort of alludes to the fact that it's like climate change global warming but it doesn't really ever say clearly what it is like they disappear into the sea basically um and it's about how language evolves and how there's all these different people that don't have their homeland anymore and they sort of meet up and then there's this like they turn to this group of friends that all go traveling looking for like traces of homelands and native language speakers and it was quite interesting it was really different concepts um, so yeah, I did enjoy that. So that's every book I've read this year, plus a couple of audiobooks I've listened to. I've also currently got on the go Girl, Woman, Other, which is a hugely popular book. I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, but that's sort of like anthology style, not quite, but sort of that kind of vibe. So I'm just sort of picking that up as and when, like between books, I'll read a chapter of that. So yeah, I'm about halfway through that, I think. So maybe that'll be the one that I finish that becomes my 15th book. That would be good, really. So yeah, so that's every book I've read this year. Like I say, everything's down in the description if you want to go and check any of these books out. And thank you for watching. I'll be back with what I want to read next year. Um, and there's going to be a lot of art-based books on there because my shelves are packed with them and I haven't got a chance to read in them. Um, so yeah, so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! -bye.